Hey, we really appreciate you all coming out this evening to help us remember an old friend of a lot of ours, and that is uh, somebody we universally, those that are old enough, remember as number 32 here, Milt Pappas. And, uh, <laughs> Milt uh, was not sick very long, and you'll find this out in just a minute, my friend Harriet Goldberg, who's been a friend of Milt since she was 16, and Milt was, I think, 18 or 19, She'll tell me the, the real years there. Uh, spoke to Milt the night before. He went to a Cubs game and then went to sleep. And uh, Milt passed in his sleep. So he didn't suffer. Uh, he had a great life. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his life after the Orioles. We're going to talk about his life with the Orioles. And uh, I think we've got a really great show for you tonight. I want to thank, first of all, the Pappas family for welcoming us into their home. They set, they set a price point that's affordable by all, and this thing, I mean, it was unbelievable. I turned around, I like blinked my eye, and we sold out 130 tickets tonight. Uh, Justin and I were talking, if we had the right venue, we could have sold 500 tickets. But then we would have paid all the money to Brooks and Boog and Ron Hansen. <laughs> But I, I do want to thank the Pappas family. They've been a great host for many an event here in town, and their food is second to none. I want to then thank good friends of mine. I've known them for years. In all of your hearts is number five on his uniform. Let's hear it for Brooks Robinson. Sitting next to Brooks is somebody that uh, I think he's more known to a new audience now for selling beef than his exploits on the baseball field. Uh, we did a press box cover story on him two summers ago. It was called The Meat of the Order, and that's what he is. He's the number one true ambassador of baseball in Baltimore because with all due respect to Brooks, he doesn't touch as many hands as Boot does now. But Brooks Robinson, next to him is Boot Pal, number 26. used to say, as the late Chuck Thompson used to say, they're not saying boo, they're saying boo. Somewhere. At, at a, somewhere. Somewhere. And sitting here at table one is an old friend of Baltimore baseball. He was American League Rookie of the Year, correct? In 1960, played for the Orioles, and he ended up being dealt the Chicago White Sox in the trade that netted the Orioles. Louis Aparicio, who played shortstop for a couple of years. He, this guy was a real good baseball player for a long time, but I'll tell you one thing, the New York Yankees, who we mostly hate in this room, they wouldn't have won those World Series without this guy as one of their chief advanced scouts, my friend Ron Hansen. Yeah. Let's hear it for Ron Hansen. And he made an unassisted triple play. I know that. <laughs> Sitting next to Ron Hansen is somebody I've known. It's funny, I got on the air in 1983. Actually, I was on 1981 as Stan the Fan for a brief time period before my sister-in-law's show got canceled right after the baseball strike. I won't get into that, how much money I lost by giving up my nighttime bartending gig to become Stan the Fan, and then did three shows in the baseball strike hit. And then the season was, uh, then they canceled the show. Anyway, first guy in 1983, when I needed a vacation, he was then a writer for the News American. He used to sit in for me some Saturdays and Sundays, and he, we've been friends ever since, which is now about 33, 34 years. He is now director of alumni affairs for the Baltimore Orioles. He was also the PR director for the Baltimore Orioles. He was assistant PR director to John Maroon when uh, Cal Ripken broke his streak and John brought him out of semi-baseball retirement because he had worked at Towson University for a number of years. My good friend, Bill Stetka. Welcome, Bill Stetka. And sitting, sitting next to Bill Stetka is somebody I've been a fan of uh, for a long, long time. I, I sort of brag as if it reflects on me nicely. First person I wanted to write for Press Box when I started it 
was Jim Henneman to write baseball, and Jim has been doing that for 10 years, and I gotta tell you something, and I'm not trying to embarrass him, at 80 years of age, and I'm fast approaching, because I'm 64 now, this guy is still sharper than any of the young whippersnappers uh, that, that get a lot of headlines now. This guy knows more about baseball than I forgot. Jim Henneman, welcome to Jim Henneman. And also, the, also, when the Orioles chose to put out a book entitled 60 Years of Oriole Magic, that's who they chose to write the book. Couldn't have picked a better person and a better writer and a better historian of the topic of the Baltimore Orioles, Jim Henneman, all right? Also at our lead table is somebody, he's not gonna be on our little mini dais here, but he's gonna share a few stories with us, is somebody that works with Bill in alumni affairs, he helps run the Orioles baseball camp, and he's been a friend of mine, he has great stories to tell about Eli Jacobs and Larry Lucchino and all those folks. Let's hear it for Steve Freeman. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention sitting to Steve Freeman's right is somebody who's been a dear friend of mine for a lot of years. We met at Oriole Fantasy Camp in 1992 and there's nobody that roots harder for the Orioles. Never want to hear a negative word about them. My good friend and the, the guy who runs Diamond Comics, he runs Baltimore Magazine and about 10 other businesses. They're all thriving thanks to the help of Joe Foss. But it's Steve Jeppy. Let's hear it for Steve Jeppy. I just want to blow you away. We're really lucky to have media royalty here. How many of you remember the name Kirby Scott? <laughs> Kirby Scott is here, ladies and gentlemen. Right here. Let's hear it for Kirby Scott. And Kirby, I apologize. What's your real last name? What's your real last name? It's Kirby Conver. Let's hear it for him. One more time. He's embarrassed when I introduced him. All right. Now, the reason, yes. I just want to make him embarrass him more. In the next two weeks, he's been inducted into the Radio Music Hall of Fame. In Nashville? In that? Country, 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 country Music Hall of Fame. Country Music Hall of Fame. Let's hear it for Kirby. Right. Now, I'm going to bring up the person that mostly responsible for this evening. She's a good friend of mine. She and her late husband, Elliot, were friends of mine that I met through my season tickets being in proximity of theirs for a number of years. And we used to nod our heads at each other and we became friends over the years. Uh, her husband passed away, complications involving Parkinson's, but he was a great, great guy. Everybody knew him, loved him. That was Elliot Goldberg and his better half is Harriet Goldberg and she's here tonight and we're going to talk a little bit about Milk Pappas. Come on up, Harriet. The chair for Harriet Goldberg. Harriet, you and I planned this out, and I know we're running probably about 20 minutes behind where we'd like to be. But we're having a great time, and I know everybody. Is everybody having a good time? That's the way Milk Pappas would like it, wouldn't he? He liked people to have a good time, didn't he? Absolutely. Milk was a lot of fun, and he would trust me. He is looking down and saying, "Oh my God, she's at it again." <laughs> so, yeah. I thank you all for coming out. This is such a tribute to Milk, and he was such a wonderful person. So, it so, just... so tell us the story. You told me you've known No Pappas since you were 16 years of age. I did, yes. I gotta be honest, I thought I knew No Pappas. Today I started to do a little research on him. He signed with the Baltimore Orioles. Jim, you correct me if I'm wrong. He was 17 years old. He yeah. signed in 1957 and uh, he was 17 years of age when he signed. Right, I'd like to say that I don't remember that. But I can't. But um, actually, my father, my father had um, some connections with the Orioles. And one night, uh, Elliot and I, when we were engaged, my parents invited uh, Gus Triandos 
and Jim Gentile, you all remember those names, yeah, and, yes. and Mel and Carol Pappas uh, for dinner. So Elliot and I came for dinner, and the minute we met Carol and Mel, that was it. From then on, we were glued at the hip. And we have been through good times together and bad times together. And I, I still can't believe that he's not here. You know, I look tonight and I look over here at, at Steve and Bill and Ronnie and Boog and Brooks and I'm thinking, where's Mel? And, but I know he's up there watching. And trust me, he's listening to every word I say. But um, he was really quite something. He was, we had a lot of fun together and we had a lot of crazy experiences and i know that brooks and boo can tell you some of those crazy experiences because they were part of those crazy experiences but um Milt was one terrific person he really was and it's just hard for me to believe that he is really not here he and i talked my husband passed away three years ago and um I guess from the time that I was 16 and um, and had met uh, Milton Carroll that we talked every single day and especially after my husband passed away uh, Milton and I talked at least twice a day and he would come to visit and do events for the Orioles and um, I did talk to him the night before he had passed away and when his son called me the next day to tell me that he passed away, I could not believe it.